you just have to be you have to be in a really good place you have to be confident as a black person you have to love yourself know yourself and be proud of who you are because no one's going to necessarily give you that love here so you have to be able to give it to yourself welcome to the melanated files in this series we highlight and share the stories of black people from across the globe remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and also follow us on social media for regular updates let's get into the interview my name is michael smith and i'm from north carolina all right so so tell me like why south korea um i like south korea because i feel like there's a lot of opportunity here and so the first time I was here um, within my first three months I was on a national television show and I won most popular I got to do some modeling a little bit of acting and you can do that while simultaneously teaching and saving money so it's just a really good place to kind of follow your dreams and also get your life together All right, nice. so how long have you been here and what do you do um well I've been here I've lived in Korea for a year, so I lived here for a year, and then I moved away, and then I came back. So I've just been here now for um, a, less than a month, um, and I'm a teacher. So I teach at a camp school, so I teach all grades from like third all the way up to high school. So what do you like the most about South Korea? Um, I like how it's easy to get everywhere. Like the country is so condensed it doesn't take it's not a lot of headache to go places so if i want to go to busan boom four hours i want to go to seoul one hour if i want to go to jeju it's like a 60 dollars plane ticket what do you like least? Uh, korea is a very homogenous society so <laughs> looking the way that i look there's not a i stand out a lot in they're not very um, inconspicuous when it comes to staring and making you feel like you may be different. So that's one thing that I like the least, but you kind of get used to. What's the general attitude toward black people here in your opinion? Um, I feel like the general attitude towards black people is that we're just different in every way and shape and form possible so you will always get a lot of stares people taking pictures of you people wanting to touch you um your hair your body just to like almost making making sure you're real in a way and it's it can get a little bit awkward sometimes but i try to understand that they really have no black people here so they're all in a way like children trying to discover like this new person in their environment do you have an ambition for life in south korea um i would love to get into more modeling more acting and i feel like there's a good there's a good industry for foreigners here for that what's the funniest thing <laughs> <laughs> that has happened to you as a black person in South Korea? Um, the funniest thing that has happened to... It's funny now, but it does, it's not funny when it happens. But a lot of times when I go to the urinal, a lot of other older Korean men will come and try to <laughs> sneak a peek to see <laughs> what it looks like. And so that is something that now I can chuckle at. And I just like, ah, hajimayo, don't, don't do that. And what's the reaction when you say that? Oh, surprise. <laughs> they, they're like, oh, I didn't know that you wouldn't want me checking you out in the bathroom. <laughs> what's the best life advice you've received? The best life advice I've ever received is to be yourself unapologetically. And that's something I try to do every day. If the world was listening right now, what's one message you would share? Be yourself unapologetically. What's your favorite Korean My favorite Korean food... Dankatsu, which is like pork belly and I get it with the cheese in there because I like to live on the edge <laughs> In what ways does Korea differ from your country? Your home country? Spatial awareness um, That was a really really big thing since there's so many people they kind of just throw away the idea of personal space so at all times someone is going to be touching you and I hate that I hate it 
And in America, it's like we all have our own sections, our own spaces, and we stay in our own spaces. And in Korea, everyone is in everyone's space and they're okay with it. So that's a really, really big thing. If there was one thing that you could change in the world, what would it be? Um, I would change the lack of understanding that we have for other people from different cultures and different walks of life, people who are just different from us in general. If there was one person dead or alive that you could have dinner with, who would it be and why? Michelle Obama. She is so beautiful and so eloquent and I feel like she would be a phenomenal conversationalist and I would just love to spend the evening from her, see if I could maybe take her away <laughs> from Barack. Probably not, but I mean, it's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your secret superpower? My secret superpower? Yeah. Making people laugh. What's the biggest lesson you've learned in life? Feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. What's your proudest accomplishment? <laughs> Graduating with my bachelor's degree in psychology with an emphasis in behavioral analysis from the University of North Carolina. What's your first memory? My first memory? <laughs> my earliest memory is me playing with my dog in my living room. Where do you get your hair done? Like, how is like, you know, like barbershop and stuff like that? I keep my hair long in Korea, so, and it's a real struggle to find products that um, cater to Afrocentric hair. So I would say get a group of friends that know how to do each other's hair. So it's like, this person knows how to twist, this person knows how to braid, this person has all the leave-in conditioner you need, this person got the oils that can, they can get shipped in. So just find people who can help you do your hair. So do you know any black barber shops there? Um, I'm, I know of some, I know of some black barber shops here, but I, even with the black barbers who are cutting hair in Korea, it's kind of a toss up. So I just tie it up in a headscarf and call it a day. What about like shopping here, clothes, sizes and stuff like that? What's the struggle like? If you are not the size of a typical Korean, just go ahead and throw that away. Sop that up with a biscuit in mission over um actually when i shop i live in chunan so i have to take a bus an hour away to seoul just to find shops that will hold clothes in my size and i'm like a bigger guy so for it to be like uh 2x 3x like 42 44 waist you're going to have to spend a lot of money and commute any advice for black people looking to uh, you know visit or move in? Know who you are, know who you are, be proud of who you are, celebrate who you are, because the Korean culture, from what I have seen, is very still homogenous. So they're all trying to be one specific thing. So when a black person comes into the society, you can't really be Korean. You're never gonna be Korean. So you have to have a lot of confidence. And I'm the way I am, I look the way I look, and so, like I was saying, you just have to be, you have to be in a really good place. You have to be confident as a black person. You have to love yourself, know yourself, and be proud of who you are. Because no one's going to necessarily give you that love here. So you have to be able to give it to yourself. And if you can, find other people of color, other black people who you can celebrate your love together. What's the biggest risk you've taken? <laughs> Um, so I was drinking at a club, sat down at the table, um, and three Korean guys come out out of nowhere and they start yelling and pointing at me like, why are you sitting at our table? You're drinking our bottles, which I was not, I was just sitting down. And so anyone who knows me knows that I am so afraid to get in a physical altercation because I, that's just not the person that I necessarily am anymore. And so everything is like, oh, just like, just walk away, apologize. But I stand up and I say, get out of my face. And they're like, and then they left. And I was like, that's the biggest risk because I could have got jumped by three Koreans and it didn't happen. Had to be brave. So you got to feel the fear and just do it anyway. What's one thing you think Korea does really well that the world can learn from? 
Korean skincare. It's phenomenal by far. I love it, it's the best. They have like a 16 step program. They have face masks, they have toners, essence, lotions, all facial cleansers. And it's just, it makes your skin look like you have no pores. <laughs> and I love it. And just with me going back to America, I could see a big difference in using American products than using Korean products. Anything else you'd like to share that you think is important for people to know before they come here, black people, primarily? Have fun. It's, it's a wild ride, Korea. And you can either come here and you can just do your job day in, day out, like go out with friends sometimes. And that's good and everything, but you could have experiences that you never thought you could have. You could go places and do things that you've never even dreamed of. And that is what I would encourage anyone to do. Come here and just go crazy. What's one place that you think people should visit, like a must visit if they come here? One place they must visit. I would say go go to Seoul and go to the Seoul Tower. It's like the third tallest building in the world, like the highest observation deck, and there's so many different things you can do while you're there. But just Seoul in general, come here, live your life, do everything. There's literally always something to do here. It seems like you remember that like a memory came to mind when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, like, what was done on that Seoul Tower, if you can divulge? Um, it was just a good day. I, we went and saw, that day in Seoul, we went and saw a musical, then we went to Seoul Tower, took pictures, and then we went out um, that night and yeah. did a, a whole assortment of nefarious things, and so that was just a good day. But Seoul Tower was like in the middle of that day, and it just brings back a lot of good memories. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> at they call me Mr. Pig. <laughs> so um, I catalog my journey and my experiences in Korea and traveling abroad. So I think it's fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to share your story or have us visit your region, send us a message on any of our social media platforms or via our website. That's good.